Hello Internet, welcome back to our Cataclysm Golf Scenario playthrough. In the last episode, we explored town some. We did quite a bit of shooting to deal with a horde up here, and then we explored an electronic shop, which is uh, really great. We got a lot of batteries, which is very beneficial, and we also found a forge, which should prevent us from needing to build a charcoal forge and all that stuff. Additionally, we found uh, quite a lot of electronics, obviously, in the electronics store, and that will be used later to harvest for electronics components. For now, we want to reload our clips since we are here. Uh, is the ammo... Where is my ammo? Probably... No, not on the magazine pile for once. Yes. So let's reload our clips here. Fully reloaded. We do have a lot of backup clips, of course, uh, which we, you know we don't strictly need. But, in fact, I, I don't see why we need 200, you know, rounds on us, basically. Uh, or 120 rounds on us at any given moment. Really not something we need this early in the game. But, also really no reason to drop them. Why not? Alright, so we're going to head out and explore a bit more. Just sort of want to uh, clear up this way a bit more. Since we already went up here, we know that it's, for the most part, pretty clear. What is this? Gambling Hall. Oh, we should definitely check that out. I think we saw one previously, and we found that the slot machines were not able to be disassembled, which I was disappointed in, uh, because I don't know why they wouldn't be. But, uh, you know, we should look anyway. Maybe it's a different building. I, I can't remember if the one we saw was called a Gambling Hall or not, so it could be something different. Uh, so let's head over that way. We're going to keep our eyes peeled because we didn't clear this side of the building. I don't think we looted this house either, which we should probably do. And we saw quite a bit of runners up this direction, if I recall. Yeah, where this uh, burned down area of forest is. Have we looted this house? I think we did. Let's, let's peek real quick, though. Have a look around. Oh, no, we would have taken canned meat. All right, so let's loot this house since we're here. Quite a lot of food there in that little pantry area. Also, let's get ourselves a question so we have something to talk about. Again, had a rough week. I'm trying not to talk about how <laughs> how unpleasant my week was, so let's keep our minds on something else. What is the last book you read? Oh, that's very straightforward. Oh, actually, it's not. Uh, well, it depends if you count uh, audiobooks as reading. I personally do, but this is something I'm running into more and more online, is when I say I read a book and people are like, oh, yeah, I love that book, blah, blah, blah. And then you say, yeah, I, you know, I, I drive for a living, so I have a lot of time to listen to audiobooks and podcasts and stuff. And then people are like, whoa, you're not really reading. Audiobooks are not the same thing as reading a book. Uh, which is strictly true, right? Obviously, listening to something. Reading is specifically looking at something with your eyes that is text and it, you know, taking that information into your brain. So technically, yes, it's not reading in the most traditional sense of the word, um, but you're getting the same information as though you read the book. So I, I think that when people get all up, you know, all panties in a bunch about not reading, I think that that's something that is actually just a silly, silly argument. You know, I, th I think it's honestly what it makes me think when I hear people say that is that they're like full of themselves and think that they're special because they read. And it's just real dumb. So, yeah, if you count audiobooks, what was the last? Uh, so, you know, for those of you who don't know, I drive for a living. Basically, every night of the week, I, before I go to work, I gather up podcasts and things that I want to listen to on my route because it takes several hours. I drive, uh, I'm doing my taxes right now, so I've been doing my mileage and putting my mileage into a spreadsheet. I drive like 2,500 miles a month. So it's a pretty significant amount of driving, and it's hours a night that I that I spend uh, driving. So I consume a lot of podcasts. The problem is there aren't that many good podcasts, so I end up falling back on books. Every night I'll listen to, like, the news and stuff like that, but once that's over, I will switch to an audiobook most of the time. So currently I'm listening to Ender's Game, the 20th anniversary version audiobook of Ender's Game, I'm not a huge fan of that novel. I think that there's a lot of... Uh, one of my big pet peeves with writing is when people write children incorrectly. And so, if you're not familiar, Ender's Game is about a bunch of really smart kids that basically function as adults 
throughout the story and are forced to behave like adults through like military training and stuff like that. This pitchfork is, it's nice to have a pitchfork because it's a good non, uh, spear reach weapon, but we already have spears that are better than the pitchfork. So I don't think that it's necessary, but if you can find one on day one, pitchforks are an excellent starter weapon. If you ever start on a farm or something like that. So we will leave that. It's a bit odd that they keep a full size pitchfork in their little living area. That's okay. I'm not here to judge. Um, yeah. So like the whole book is, is kids doing non kid things. So the whole book, Ender is basically an adult, despite the fact that like literally he's six years old. And so part of me hates it because I'm listening to the book and I'm like, bro, he's six. Like, I don't care how smart he is. He's a six year old. Six year olds don't talk like this. Six year olds don't act this way. But like also they're heralded from birth basically to be these like superhuman kids. So it's, it's one of those tricky spots because it makes me feel like I just keep rolling my eyes. Like I'm fair way into the book now. I'm like four hours in or whatever. And he's like, I think he's like seven or eight now, but he's just, he doesn't act like a seven year old, you know, and it really kind of bothers me. So I'm not loving that book. Plus I'm not finished with it yet. So I don't know if that counts. I really, I don't, I don't even like the Ender's Game series. I know they're beloved books that people really, really like. If you go online and talk about Ender's Game poorly, you'll get a lot of people who tell you that it's like one of their favorite sci-fi books. I don't, I don't think they're that good. I think the first one is, is fine. It's interesting. There's a lot of choices I would not make if I were writing it that way. I, I would have done things very differently. I think the ending is the best part of that book. Like is, is kind of like a surprise thing. And, and it's pretty interesting. No spoilers. I'm not going to give spoilers, but even though it's like 25, 30 years old, um, <laughs> Uh, they did make a movie out of it as well. I didn't hate the movie. I thought it would be really terrible. And it was just slightly bad in my mind. And it's pretty hard to find like good sci-fi movies a lot of times. Uh, because they're so expensive. So people don't like take the risk on making sci-fi movies. Because they're so expensive to make and shoot and everything. So the ones that come out are either like super good or super terrible. I don't I don't see any reason for us to go in that basement. Once I saw more than one zombie, I just thought there's really probably nothing down there that I care about. Uh, so I'm not I'm not really worried about that. We're just gonna move on. We've mostly looted the house. Uh, our inventory is a little full, but that's okay. We're gonna keep exploring here. Uh, we did explore this house. I remember going in the window, uh, and I can see all the doors are open, so we probably went all the way through except for that one closet. Here's where we want to be careful because we haven't cleared on this side. See something to the north. Uh, and a smashed up vehicle. I wonder what smashed you up. What is this? A pigeon. Okay, I'm not worried about a pigeon. I hear my neighbor's kids outside. Hopefully that's a non-issue. Now my dogs are going to bark because they hear the kids outside. I heard him trying to start the grill next door, so I think they might be out for a while. If it gets too bad, we'll call the episode short, but we're going to push through because I really would like to keep recording, and I'm tired of uh, my neighbors dictating what my schedule is. So, Zombie Soldier is good. Same thing. We can find more ammo and grenades. Quite a lot of enemies there. Man, fat zombies always spawn in hordes. I don't understand why that is. Usually when I see them, it's at like a gym or something because people think it's funny. Like, oh, it's a gym, so it'll be full of fat people, of course. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Um, so it's a bit strange to see them outside. That crow can see us and is hostile. Let's see what that does. You are going to come over. Okay, we're going to go to the M4 because I, I'm just a guess. I'm betting that the crow is hard to hit and I really don't want to get tore up now. What this is going to do, though... Oh, we're so far to the north. It's going to draw enemies from all around us here. It's not worth it for a gambling hall. Let's pick up the spear. No, don't drop. Where? Where the M4? We're going to back off. I'm going to try to swing at you. Maybe you're big enough that you won't have the hard to hit flag. Oh, they shriek as well. I didn't know that. Oh, bird, you're going the wrong way. Oh, you've lost interest. Oh, fleeing. What? Are they one that flee and then dart back? They're not. What a strange 
creature. Okay, well, let's look in the gambling hall here. I do believe this is the one we explored before, yeah. So this is not valuable to us. Probably some alcohol here, though, you would think. A place like this probably serves alcohol, right? It literally, this whole place is empty. It just has one bag of popcorn kernels and a paper wrapper. Who built this? Some cheese spread. And the fridges are empty. Bro, who made this? Okay, let's just leave some vending machines. We don't even have a cash card on us. Okay. What a dumb... Okay. People eat when they're gambling. People drink when they're gambling. Even if it's just slots, it's a gambling hall. It's not like it's in an airport, right? Where you where you wouldn't have alcohol because you're like in the airport playing slots or something. This is a building that was designed for people to come and gamble. So you would think that uh, you would probably smoking would be allowed. A lot of gambling places allow smoking. So you would expect to find some cigarettes and things. Possibly maybe people left behind, you know, whatever. Um, you definitely would expect to see food. They have a kitchen. Why is there nothing here? So we're just going to leave because that kind of annoys me. I don't see any reason to press north here exactly. Gas station's not really doing it for me. Uh, we could hit some of these other houses, but I think we'll just pick the ones that are close. I don't, I don't see a reason to push up when I don't really want to spend all day shooting zombies. Anyway, uh, what was I talking about? Ender's Game. I think it's fine. I read the first two, didn't really like them, uh, and now I'm listening to the audiobook. Another crow? Really? This one's in the house. Why? I don't know what you want from me, birds. And it's fleeing again. What is, what is your deal? Okay, and they, they are hard to hit. Or also, we forgot to drop our bags, so we have a terrible penalty to to melee. So I don't know what their deal is. I don't really want to mess with them. They just annoy me already. So uh, I did read the Shadow series. I read almost all the Shadow books, which is, uh, for those who you know have read Ender's Game, there's a book series that follows Bean instead of Ender. I did read a lot of those. I liked those. Uh, because I liked, I think it's like Petra and Bean are the main focus of that of that series. And I did like both of their characters for the most part. Although I haven't read them in years. They might be terrible. I remember they were very political. Instead of being like hardcore sci-fi, it was a lot more like politics and stuff, which I liked at the time. But anyway, the question was, what what's the last book that I read? Uh, before... Ender's Game, I, I listened to The Martian, but I didn't finish it because I actually don't like the ending of that book. I, I only really like the, like, you know, Space Potatoes part. I Like, uh, I that book as well, like, I don't want to badmouth every book I talk about, but uh, The Martian is a fantastic film. It's a very good book when it comes to science and stuff like that. Like, I believe I saw a quote from Andy Weir, the guy who wrote it. Uh, he said something like, uh, I wanted this book to be a love story to science. And I think on that particular basis, he absolutely succeeded. I think he did a fantastic job with focusing on the science and, and having a plausible and interesting story. Uh, most of the stuff I don't like about that book is writer stuff. Like I think that there is some poor choices in a plot development perspective. I think that the pacing is a little bit wonky it's not as smooth as a lot of like uh, modern books that you would read uh one of the so another pet peeve of mine is when people write characters that are all the same so basically every character in the martian is sciencey and then they think that they're funny so every single character in that book even when they're talking about something extremely serious extremely important the science is always there, and then they start cracking jokes, and it just never feels natural. Like, that is my number one complaint. And I know it's a small complaint, and I know I'm an idiot for, for even complaining when the book is actually, you know, quite an enjoyable story. But, uh, yeah, that, that book just has has so many people who crack jokes in inappropriate moments, and they're never funny. Like, I don't think there's a funny line in that whole freaking book, but every character, all oh, they're just cracking jokes. 
So it's a huge pet peeve of mine when people do stuff like that. Because, like, not every character is the same. You, you know, it's fine. Every character in that book, it makes sense. It makes sense that they're all intellectuals and uh, highly intelligent, you know, science people. Because he's working primarily with NASA and, like, JPL and stuff. And it makes perfect sense that they would all be very intelligent people. What doesn't make sense, like, the re think about it. How many people do you know who actually actively make jokes in every single conversation? Relatively few, right? Most people actually are not that funny. I think anyone can be funny, but I don't think most people are. And I, I think that there are a lot of people who are serious, especially in serious moments. So when you're talking about, like, you know, uh, such and such scientist is talking about how this guy's going to die a horrible death. And then he turns around and cracks a joke. You're like, wow, that's wildly inappropriate for someone in your position. And, and for some, for such a serious topic, how this is so inappropriate. And I can tell that it's the writer thinking like, oh, I got to make a joke in every conversation. And it just really rubs me wrong. It's such a weird thing to complain about. But anyway, I listened to, <laughs> God, I'm terrible. I listen to The Martian. Uh, it's very good. I enjoy the story. I don't enjoy the writing. I enjoy the story. Uh, same with the movie, actually. I thought the movie was well acted and the effects were very, very good. And the story itself is fantastic. But at the end, especially... Like, one, same thing. In the movie, there's way too many jokes that are just not funny. Uh, and that somebody wrote and thought that they were so funny. Uh, so that's one thing I don't like. And then uh, the movie itself ends with a very stupid nonsense thing that an astronaut would not do. Um, and in the book, they joke about this thing, but they don't actually do it because they recognize this is stupid nonsense. But in the movie, uh, they, they ran with it anyway. So, yeah, not not my favorite. I should watch the movie again. It's very well acted. It's a very good story. You know, the idea of of uh, The Martian is is quite good, in my opinion. Anyway, and again, hard to find good sci-fi movies. So that's definitely up there for me. I know a lot of people like Gravity. Like whenever I mention The Martian and talk about sci-fi, people are like, oh man, Gravity was so good. I thought that movie was terrible. Like not even like just, you know, passable or slightly bad. I thought Gravity was awful. It, I felt like I wasted the whole time. I didn't feel emotionally invested. I didn't enjoy that it was basically just someone chilling for like an hour and a half, you know, it just seems so boring to me. Uh, and I did not like at all that, that movie. Uh, and it was so hot too. Like people loved gravity. I, I hate it. I just can't stand that movie. I also like life, which is a really unpopular opinion at, uh, Jake Gyllenhaal, Ryan Reynolds. Uh, is it Emily Blunt? I don't remember who all was in that movie, but it was a lot, like a star studded cast. And, uh, I actually like that movie. I thought it was like, you don't see very many good sci-fi movies and you definitely don't see very many good sci-fi horror movies. And I thought that that I went into it expecting kind of an over the top goofy monster movie. And that's, that's kind of what I got. So I was pretty, pretty content with that. So now that I've completely derailed your trust in my taste in, in film and, and boot in books, I almost said books. I don't know why I would say that. What a stupid person I am. Um, yeah, so I read The Martian, which I guess counts. Uh, if you're talking about actual books that I sat down and read a book, well, I'm going to count ebooks because real books, I don't think I've read anything in like, I think I read, uh, what's that book series? Uh, it's about the reporter in the zombie apocalypse. It's Mira Grant wrote it. What's that book series called? I have to, I have to look it up. Oh, it's called Feed. Yeah, I read uh, Feed by Mira Grant. You should uh, you should look those up. It's actually a pretty well-written uh, book with a, a realistic take on a virus. And it's zombie stuff, but it's like they're reporters, so it's kind of an interesting viewpoint. And it's a whole world. It's not like uh, your traditional zombie stuff. It's kind of like... Uh, like the book starts, it's after the zombie apocalypse and humanity has kind of learned to cope with zombies. So that was pretty interesting. You rarely see books from that perspective and I won't give spoilers or anything. Um, I, I really disagreed with the decision the protagonist makes towards the end of the book, but yeah, I enjoyed that book. That was the last physical book that I read. Ebook. I read, uh, let the right one in pretty recently. 
uh, I think probably is the last ebook I read fully. Um, I had uh, talked about it on in in this very Cataclysm series, I believe, and then uh, I listened to a podcast where they referenced that it was uh, a book written before the movie. So I was like, you know, that'd be cool. You know, I like reading you know foreign fiction and and stuff like that, and seeing how everything is slightly different, you know, from uh, from the your traditional U.S. take. Whenever you, uh, it's one of the reasons I like foreign movies because they focus on different things uh, sometimes than what a traditional like English uh, speaking audience would deal with. I watch a lot of Korean movies these days, but anyway. Um, so I read Let the Right One In and hated it. Like I thought it was uh, a huge translation issue. It was uh, the formatting was weird. I thought the storytelling style was weird. So I didn't like it from a writing perspective. And then also there's hugely problematic stuff in that like uh well i guess it's spoilers i don't want to there's a some there's a predatory character in that novel that tries to do some things to a child and when i read that i was like nah like no this i'm done with this so yeah i don't even think i did finish it now that i've said that I don't think I did finish that book. What's the last ebook I? I mean, no one cares probably what I'm reading, but you at this point get an idea for what my tastes are. I read ebooks all the time. I just don't finish them because most of them turn out to be terrible. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I guess I don't really read much. It's mostly just audiobooks. Uh, driving for a living, it's like the one good thing I have is that I can listen to a lot of podcasts and, and ebooks and stuff. Um, so yeah, Ender's Game in the near future will be like the main last book that I listened to. Uh, I listened to The Martian. Before that, it was book 10 of the Harry Dresden books, uh, The Dresden Files by Jim Butcher. Uh, before that, I listened to a book called The Vanishing Season, I believe. I don't even remember what it was about. Something FBI agents, if I remember right. I don't even really remember what it was. Uh, yeah... I, I read a lot of the same books over and over and over. Once I know I like a book, I'll stick with it. Because there are so many bad books. Like, I can't tell you how many times I get excited to read a book. I'll read the synopsis, or someone will recommend it, and I'll be like, wow, this sounds awesome. And then you read it, and you're like, man, you don't know how to write, huh? Or, or like, even if it's not writing quality, because I'm really not a writing snob. Like, I know probably based on this conversation, you're like, oh, this guy's just a snob who, if things don't go exactly the way he wants them to, he hates them. That's really not the case. I listen to lots of stuff, and I'm interested in lots of stuff. It's just that, I don't, you know, I don't even know how to describe it. Like, people just make bad choices. Like, there are so many books I read where it's like, wow, this is really interesting. Okay, I could really get into this. And then you go in, like, five chapters, and the character is just, like, over-the-top nonsense. Like, like, okay, so people like James Bond, right? James Bond is a is a fun movie series. Uh, lately, it's been a lot of that really cool, like, I remember uh, the one uh, Daniel Craig James Bond starts out with that really cool parkour chase, and it's really interesting, you know, characters. It's over-the-top drama and action and stuff like that. That's fine in a movie, but when I read a book and they make the character, like, superhuman way ridiculously overpowered i hate that like i think that's so terrible you're not writing a real character you're writing a caricature and it's not entertaining when you feel like the protagonist is completely invulnerable the best characters in any writing are people that you connect to that you relate to that you uh feel some sort of draw towards compulsion towards I'm sorry about my neighbors, by the way. I'm sure you can hear their kids screaming and shouting and laughing outside. I'm sorry. I have no control over any of that. Um, and, and you know, the most characters that people are drawn to are some form of themselves. Like, most of the time when people really connect to a character, it's because they remind them in some way of themselves. But also, people don't like, even if that's not the case, like, you know, Walter White, for instance, from Breaking Bad... We can all relate to kind of that that feeling of like I'm in a rut. I've been doing the same thing for years, you know. I some people are married. Oh, we we do the same thing every Tuesday's Taco Day. Every Thursday we go on a walk. Every Friday we, you know, and you get into a rut. So we can connect to that. 
But as the story progresses, he becomes less and less relatable. But we still like him because he's a complicated character that we got to watch grow from point A to point B. We got to see that transformation. He constantly, even when he does something bad, he appears to be torn about it. It seems like it chews him up inside. It makes him very relatable. And that's the kind of stuff. And even if they're not relatable, humans are complex creatures. And the more complex and kind of, you know, realistic that you make a character, the more people will like that character. So I read a lot of books where they just make them like these generic walking, like, superhumans and it's just like you don't get it like you don't you don't get why people like your character you don't you don't understand why you know like i don't know i can't even think of a good example are you a brute no you're a tough zombie you're not a concern we are a little slow because of our pain let's drop uh oh we're, we have leather pants our leather pants were destroyed i was gonna go pick up some from base but we actually have some let's drop our backpack and we will melee this guy although we are slightly slow Anyway, I'm not trying to get on a tangent about character development and why people are bad writers. I just, I just, I just want, I just wish there were better books. Like so often, especially zombie books. I love zombie books, but every time I pick up a zombie book, I get excited and then it's so terrible. I don't know. And if you're like me, if you, if you read a lot of zombie books, you know exactly what I'm talking about. They'll start out promising. You'll be like, oh, this is a really cool zombie apocalypse. It's really neat to see people go through this. And then partway through, it just turns into just nonsense. Or they turn out to be like Rick, you know, Rick Grimes. Instead of instead of being a real human experiencing a traumatic and difficult experience where they can grow and learn to be survivors. Instead, they, it's like day one and they turn out they're like, Holy crap, I'm actually really good at murdering zombies. I'm like the best there's ever been. It's just it's just too much. It's just over the top. Everyone who writes zombie stories seems to want to make their guy like the best. You know, instead of making them like a human being uh, that experiences things and, and goes through change and, and is traumatized like a normal person would be, they make them from Jump Street like this super powerful... I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. Okay. We're in about 30 minutes. I'm not feeling real confident. My neighbors are being real loud. I think we're going to wrap the episode. Everybody, thank you for watching. Feel free to let me know in the comments down below what is the last book you read. And if you have any book recommendations, I'm always open to book recommendations. No promises, but I like hearing uh, what other people are reading. So let me know. Everybody, that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.